Hi Dave here and today I'm going to be looking at the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. Let's take a look. So before we get started, just a little disclaimer that Hollyland did send me this to use and review and it is mine to keep afterwards, but all my opinions are my own and they do not get to see it before I upload it. But just on that, thank you very much for the support this year, Hollyland. You've been fantastic. Nancy, thank you very much. So let's get to the unboxing. So here we have the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. Nice feel to the box. Inside we have an after sales card. And then we have the manual. Then we have the units themselves. As you can see, they look identical, but you've got a red and blue clasp at the bottom. Underneath that, you've got your plugs and you've got five antenna. It's nice that you get one extra and mine came with a UK adapter as well. You also have a locking nut on the power adapter as well, which is nice so it doesn't pull out by accident. And like I said, they're completely identical apart from the colours at the bottom and what they do. One's a transmitter, one's a receiver. And all we have to do here is take off the plastic protectors and screw in the antenna. And there we are. So if we take a look at the back, I'm just putting in an NWF970 battery. I've got the large ones here, they're the newer ones. And also you can use the power adapter and on top of that, you've also got the USB-C, so it can actually be charged three different ways, which is quite impressive. And as you can see, the form factors are exactly the same as mentioned before. On the side, you've got the SDI in and out. You also have an HDMI in and out as well. Now, the SDI and the HDMI work together, so you could have an HDMI in and an SDI out, or vice versa, so it makes it really versatile. Now, let's see how long it takes to go from completely off to linked. So 30 seconds, that's pretty good. One thing I found was the placement of the HDMI. I'd really like to have had it on the side. So I have one of these swivel HDMI adapters, which is quite useful. So when mounting it on the camera, it might not be an issue depending on your HDMI cable or your camera, but the swivel adapter did definitely help me. One thing to mention is the on button. I'm not that keen on how it's been done. It's a bit like when you're trying to press a SD card into a camera, especially the micro one. You kind of need to use your fingernail, maybe it's just mine, but I'm finding it a bit awkward to turn on and off and also I'm getting it stuck in as well. So it would have been nice to have a clicky latch button or something like that. So if you hold the stop down, you get the menu up and we go into the scene mode. We can actually choose from HD mode, balance mode and speed mode. HD mode will be better quality and speed mode will be better latency. I'm just gonna choose balance mode because that just suits me. Next, we have the fan speed. Now there is a fan in there, but it's really quiet. It, I haven't really noticed it myself, but then I haven't pushed them too hard. But you can have it on auto, slow or off. So if you are doing something really quiet, which I'm the opposite, because I'm gonna be doing something to do with DJing and loud music, then you can turn it off completely. Then we have our system settings, so we can pair language and just reset the default and the Wi-Fi password, and lastly, the version number. And then that's it, nice and simple. Now, one thing on here, I just wanted to show you that at the bottom, it says 1080p 50. My camera's actually set to 4K 25, but I assume this is the highest this can go. Just something for you to note. Next, let's take a look at the Hollyland apps. It's actually Hollyview if you go into the App Store, and also they work on Android as well. Now with the 400S Pro, it enables me to center the receiver as you would normally and you can record into a capture card, but at the same time you can run a number of smart devices. So here I have the iPad and the iPhone as well. So what we have to do is connect to the Wi-Fi of the Hollyland receiver and then we can go into the app and you do have to put a serial number in, but I've skipped through that and you click join and you'll see both of the screens pop up and you can see the latency between the two. So now what we have is on the top left, we have the Canon recording directly. Then on the top right, it's the actual receiver going into my Blackmagic 12G. That is where you'll see the latency. And at the bottom, you see my overhead recording the smart devices. I found the latency is around three to two frames, which I think is excellent, but I've seen other reviews as well and it's all matching these stats. Because this works with any HDMI or SDI out, I'm gonna run my iPad into the transmitter and I'm going to have the iPhone on running the app and my top right is the recording. 
So I'm just going to play a little game for you and you can see the latency between them and it's really, really good. So let's start with the pros. I really like this form factor. I know a lot of people like the older vertical ones, but I like the horizontal one. The other thing is it's really well made metal and I really like the feel of it. It's light, so it's not too heavy to attach to even my compact camera, even though they're pretty much the same size. I did do a quick distance test. Now, I'm not going to be using it for distance and it's England and it's always raining and it's freezing out there. So I'll let other people on YouTube do that. However, I have been testing other things and I'll show you my setup. So basically how I would use it or how I'm going to use it is a wireless overhead. Now I'm going to set it on my clamp and I'm going to put it on to my camera, which then can go into my A10 mini and then it will go broadcast like that for a live DJ set. This is actually really good. And the ability to use SDI to HDMI or HDMI to SDI is really, really useful. Another big pro is the fact that you can use three different ways to charge this and the battery life is really good. I've been using this for a while to review and I haven't managed to run the batteries down once and I've used both the larger batteries and the smaller ones. So let's get on to the cons. It's not a deal breaker for me, but I would have liked to have the HDMI out on the side as well as the SDI. Also, I don't like the on and off button. It gets stuck. I have to use my finger now to do it. I don't know if anyone else has that problem, but I certainly do. And I would like to have had a latch so it clicks into place. But to be honest, they're my only downsides. And the last one is obviously cost. It's not the cheapest. It is the pro section but it is £649 at the moment on Amazon in the UK. And obviously that is not cheap for us, especially at the moment. But if you are looking for a reliable, low latency, battery life saving unit, then I definitely would recommend this. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you like what you've seen, like and subscribe. And I hope you're all well. Stay safe, happy creating, and I'll see you next time.